You're looking at two of these right now. They're cathode ray tubes. That's a CRT for short. This is one of them. The other one's in your TV set. Like all good inventions that were discovered a long time ago, cathode ray tube really isn't the right name for it. The basic effect was discovered before the electron was known about. In actual fact, they're focused electron beam tubes. But I just made up that name, and it's probably not going to catch on. The effect takes place inside a glass shell with a vacuum. And the vacuum is necessary so that the electrons won't keep crashing into air molecules. Here's what's inside. An electron gun. Now, in order to keep the universe balanced, electrons like to go from where there are too many of them to where there aren't enough. A power supply connected to the gun supplies electrons to a heated metal plate at the back. It's called the cathode. The same power supply steals electrons from another metal plate at the front. It's called the anode. Because of the heat and the charges provided by the power supply, the electrons zoom off towards the plate at the front. When they get there, there's a big surprise. There's a little hole in the plate. And they go shooting out into space in a stream. The stream of electrons continues on until it hits the front of the tube. And inside the glass is a coating that gives off light when it's struck by electrons. Now, so far, all we have is a novelty light bulb that runs on 20,000 volts and isn't very bright. There are two more properties of electron beams that make this useful. They can be attracted and repelled by electrical charges. So a small mesh is installed near the cathode. Varying the charge on that mesh, it's called the grid, changes the intensity of the electron beam. A charged ring is also placed in its path. And by adjusting the charge on it, the beam can be focused. The second property of electron beams is that they can be deflected by magnetism. That's what the coils of wire on this one are for. They're electromagnets. And by varying the current in them, the spot can be moved anywhere on the faceplate. One set of coils moves the spot in the X direction. That's engineer talk for sideways. The other set takes care of the Y direction, up and down. Your TV set uses electromagnets a lot like these. Here's some audio tones applied to those electromagnets. Now, that's one way to put a picture on a cathode ray tube. It's to move the spot around in various shapes, just like this. It's called a vector display. Some computer terminals and arcade video games use the vector display technique. Vector displays are easy to resize. Television as we know it uses a raster display. A raster display is a repetitive pattern that gets brightened and darkened at the correct time. The television raster is formed by moving the spot from left to right 15,734 times a second. And vertically, 59.94 times a second. The rectangle that results is made of 525 thin lines. This rectangle is synchronized right now with the camera that's shooting me. And there's one more input on my CRT, the z-axis, or z-axis if you're American. It controls the, the brightness of the spot. I'll connect the camera's video signal to it. A picture in glorious black and green. See, the CRT in my oscilloscope only has a green fluorescent coating on it, so all I can reproduce is shades of green. The color CRT is a fancy version of this. A color tube relies on the fact that most colors, including white, can be faked with the correct combinations of red, green, and blue. Now, this isn't like mixing paint, because uh, we're mixing light. It adds together. When you mix paint, it's subtractive. The color CRT uses three beams. And on the faceplate are different compounds designed to give off red, green, and blue light when the beams strike them. Now, there are various layouts of this. This particular one uses three guns arranged in a triangle. And the phosphors are arranged in groups of three dots. And behind the faceplate is a thing called a shadow mask. It has a single hole for each trio of three dots. Because of sort of basic geometry, one gun can only hit the green dots. And ditto for the red and blue. The three beams are swept across this pattern of dots, and their intensities are varied to produce all the colors you see. This uh, particular monitor has switches for the three guns. Here's the red gun only. Red, white, yellow, orange, purple, and gray have a little bit of red in them. Here's the green gun. Here's the blue gun only. No matter what arrangement of color phosphors your set uses, all the colors you see are made up of a mixture of red, green, and blue light. If you don't believe me, just flick a small drop of water sometime on a color CRT and look at it carefully. Or you can use a magnifying glass. There is a push to replace CRTs with other sorts of display devices. 
but so far they're nowhere near the brightness and the sharpness of the good old CRT. So I think if you've used one of those display devices, you'll agree that the CRT is likely to be around for a long time to come. And listen, if sometime in the future you see a TV set advertised with a focused electron beam tube, remember, you heard it here first. It's interesting to go back almost 100 years to shortly after the invention of the phonograph. Some of this might sound pretty familiar. Enthusiasts argued over the merits of one or another machine, the dimensions of the acoustic horns, and the superiority of various needle materials. And believe it or not, Edison and others carried out live versus recorded comparisons in which the audience couldn't tell the difference. My favorite quote, though, comes from Sir Arthur Sullivan of Gilbert and Sullivan fame after he saw his first phonograph. For myself, I can only say that I'm astonished and somewhat terrified at the results of this evening's experiments. Astonished at the wonderful power you've developed and terrified at the thought that so much hideous and bad music may be put on record forever. The next episode, we're going to look at light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs>